Thank you for joining today's Words of Wisdom with Prayer. 23rd of November is a special celebration day for Happy Science members and for all humanity. 37 years ago, Lord Elkantara, Master Riho Okawa, preached his teaching for the first time to humanity. We all give our sincere gratitude from the bottom of our heart. Now let's move on to today's words of wisdom. Today's words of wisdom is control your mind by cultivating maturity of mind. Control your mind by cultivating maturity of mind. Since you are watching this channel, I assume you all are seeking for some kind of inner peace. And some of you, uh, in order to attain enlightenment, you might be trying hard to get rid of your watery attachment or watery desires. These watery desires, such as desire for drinking and eating, sexual behavior and sleep, or desire for fortune and fame, they are all they all stem from the physical body. Since we all have physical body, we cannot completely ignore these watery desires. Completely deny complete denial of them means the death of your body. The important thing is you should not be controlled by the desires. You should be the one who controls your mind. You should be the master of your mind. But saying this, I am the one who is often controlled by the desires. But recently, I joined a Happy Science Seminar, one of the Happy Science Temple, and I encountered one of the Master Ryuho Oka's lecture that might help me to be a better, to have a better control of my mind. The lecture is in this book, The Strong Mind, Chapter 3. If your mind is close to the mind of animals, you are living based on your physical desires. To avoid this situation, you need to grow spiritually. Here I'd like to introduce one of the ways to cultivate your maturity of mind. There are three points I'd like to introduce one by one. First point is think less about your feelings. Please reflect back what you are thinking yesterday. Was it about your feeling or about other people's feeling? Were you thinking about your happiness or other people's happiness? If you want to have a mature mind, please reduce the time of thinking about yourself and increase the time to think about other people's happiness. When you are in a good situation, it is not difficult. But when you are in tough situation, it is not easy. For example, when I have a problem with human relationship, I often think about how I feel and justify myself. And it is usually difficult for me to think in someone's shoes especially when I do not like him or her. Or when I have some worries, I only think about myself and tend to forget about giving love to other people. Even when you are having a hard time, please do not forget to give love to other people and please increase the time to think about other people and other people's happiness and think less about yourself. That's the first point. And the second point is try to acknowledge diverse opinions and perspectives. Most of people, including me, are apt to judge things or people according to their own thoughts or thinking patterns. However, 
to have a mature mind, it is important to find some values in thought that are different from yours. Since I have a negative tendency that I often see things subjectively, I am extra cautious about feeling, finding some justice or value in thought that are different from mine. God has created many creatures with a lot of variety of individuality. They have different tastes and opinions. And among those differences, we aim for creating a harmony. If we all have the same opinion, there's no progress. And related to acknowledging diverse opinions, I want, to e I want everyone to remember here is that your strong point that you acquired with effort can work negatively to see other people's good point. For example, suppose if you were born in a poor family and made a great effort and created the wealth, you might have little respect for the people who were born rich. So please make sure do not let your strong point judge other people. Okay, the last point, third point, is have a heart of forgiveness and put it into practice. Have you ever forgiven someone who has treated you badly? This is a very religious practice. Forgiving someone is not a nature that you were born with. Through your experience, sorrow, sufferings, and effort, the ability of forgiveness will be acquired. When I have some troubles with someone, I try to list up his or her good point and write it down, write them down on my diary. One or two days of practice will not make any differences, but continuing this one for certain length of time, you can gradually find, I can gradually find uh, some good nature or divine nature of that person. Then my negative feelings gone. So if you have someone who cannot forgive, please try it. And the, also, there are some cases that your, you or you, your loved one became the victim of crimes. In those cases, it is extremely difficult to forgive a person who hurt you or your loved one. However, please remember that keeping a grudge for a long time will not make you happy at all. So you need to forgive the person at some point. Okay, these are the three points which will cultivate the maturity of mind. Think less about your feelings, try to acknowledge diverse opinion and perspective, and have a heart of forgiveness and put into practice. Please look into your mind every day and check if you practice these three points. Gradually, you can be the master of your mind. And to know more about being the master of your mind, please read this book, The Strong Mind. Okay, now let's move on to the prayer. Lord Elkantare, Master Ryuho Okawa, thank you very much for giving us your great light every day. We practice the principles of happiness, love, wisdom, self-reflection, and progress to make the world better with our brothers and sisters. With our gratitude, we will recite the true words spoken by Buddha, prayer to the Lord, and prayer to guardian guiding spirit.
The two words spoken by Buddha, Ryuho Okawa. There used to be the light in the great universe. The light is the energy of Buddha. People can live by this energy, and Buddha's energy has made human history. It will be supplied eternally. This eternal light comes from heaven and prevails on earth. This is the light of heaven. Through the prism of Buddha, there appear the seven colors of rainbow, arching over in the sky. Here you can see Buddha's mercy. Yellow is the color of teaching. White is the color of saving. Red is the color of justice. Purple is the color of obedience. Blue is the color of thinking. Green is the color of harmony. Silver is the color of progress. These seven colors help each other, and there appears Buddha land. Buddha land is shining brightly because of gathering of bodhisattvas. This is the land of love or the land of mercy. This is the land of wisdom or the land of teaching. Especially, this is the land of souls rest in peace. Real souls are the children of Buddha. The children of Buddha became real human beings. Real human beings have spirituality. The spirits are immortal powers. The spirits are immortal forces. The spirits are real entities. The physical bodies are the shadows of the spirit. It means you are the boat sailing down the great river. The great river is the symbol of the course of life. Each of you sails down as a small boat, so you need a boatman. If it were not for your own boatman, you surely go aground. This boatman really means your mind. If your mind makes a mistake, the boat breaks into pieces by a large rock. And you also need a bamboo pole. This pole is the meaning of the two words. When you go down a rapid stream, you need to pump in the stream. Then you can change your course. The two words mean the teaching of Buddha. Buddha enlightened and spoke the two words. And Buddha's teaching became a gold mine. This gold mine suggests various teachings. These are another expression of Buddha's truth. It brightens up your days, or to put it another way, the fruits of Buddha's mercy. All of you, now, here, listen to me. Never lose your way, now and forever. The guiding hand has already waved. Please follow this white hand and go straightly on and on. Your lives are not limited to this world only. They have three aspects, the past, the present, the future. Your past have already gone by, yet still, your mistakes will be kept in your mind. That is the reason why you should understand other people, and you yourself should reflect on what you have done. You and others are not different. On the contrary, both are children of Buddha and brothers and sisters. Now then, love each other. Let us bring up each other, and it's time to forgive each other. This is the eternal role, which penetrates the present and the future. Yes, indeed, the light of the dark night. The dark night of this world is hell. It is also the same in another world. Since we came down to this world, the sun of the truth is scheduled to rise. Now we are watching rising sun. It will shed light to the future to invite sad people to Buddha land. Now here, I command, there shall not be conflict in this world. There shall not be distrust in this world. There shall not be crime in this world. There shall not be evil spirits in this world. There shall not be the devil in the next world. Only the ideal world, utopia, shall be realized. All of the people, love each other, live harmoniously, believe in one another. That world is utopia. All of us could be the light of bodhisattvas, believing that the light has reality, believing that the love has reality, believing that the truth has reality. These are the facts that should be conveyed. We, the light of bodhisattvas, get together, work together to keep right mind. 
and we be in tune with Buddha's words. Here we bow to do so. Prayer to the Lord. Our Lord El Kantari, you are the source of all light, all power, all wisdom, and all love. May you give us light, give us power, give us wisdom, and give us love. O Lord, our Father, please protect this planet of love, Earth. Protect us from all evil and open a future for us. O Lord, Thank you for giving us light. We give thanks from the bottom of our heart. Prayer to Guardian and Guiding Spirit My Guardian and Guiding Spirit, deep inside of me, you are the fountain of light, the light of hope, the source of wisdom, and the shield of courage. Every day, may you help me develop my soul and refine my mind. Every day, may you give me inspiration and show me the right path to follow. Please protect me from all evil and guide me in living a better life. For this, I give my thanks. Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful day.